So, welcome to the uh, second lecture of digital system design with PLDs and FPGAs. Uh, in the last lecture, uh, I talked about uh, the content of the course, um, the course objective, what are the competencies I hope you will develop at the end of the course, uh, a reference book and some ex the mode of uh, giving the exercises during the, uh, the lectures all that was covered in the course objectives and contents. Uh, then I started an overview of the field or a revision and overview of the field. So, uh, quickly we will recapture uh, the overview we have done the last uh, lecture, uh, then continue with the, the this revision and the overview. So, let us move on. Um, I said uh, in learning, um, you learn always uh, bottom up that means from the smallest building block to the complete system you go hierarchically that uh, like a transistor gate combination sequential and the system. But while designing you go top down like you, you take a processor break into pieces take each piece and make it into further pieces and go all the way to the gates and the transistor. So, when you design you should remember that uh, this is the hierarchy we use, but while learning the opposite is the thing. We have run through some example like you start with transistors, construction, characteristic, symbol, then you make um, gates out of the transistor, various gates, it is input output characteristics. Uh, then you build further useful circuits like full adder using XOR gate, AND gates and OR gates by writing its uh, truth table, minimizing it and implementing it and so on. At the next level we use this as a building block uh, to build even a bigger you know multi bit adder. In this case the 4 bit ripple adder made of 4 uh, full adders. Then having known this then we can go to the next level of building uh, with these building blocks the combinational and sequential building blocks a multiplier with uh, multiplicand accumulator multiplier with adder and so on. But in the case of design we do the opposite having known the multiplication algorithm we design an architecture with higher level sequential and combinational components then each block is designed separately. In this case I am illustrating one of the block design. So, you take the adder then that is shown as a 4 bit ripple adder in that it is made of 4 full adders and full adder is taken that is designed and then uh, uh, this is taken the gates are designed in terms of transistors and so on. Like when you design a chip even this you have to go further you know you have to make uh, the transistor layout in the chip and the mask and so on. But our interest in this course is up to here when we come to this point uh, the front end design is over that we convert the spec or the algorithm into. Uh, into a gate and flip flop uh, level circuit. So, that is a front end design that is the focus of the, the course. Um, so, let us uh, move forward and as I said uh, when you design uh, the major constituent of the design the first um, foremost important thing is the function and you have learned all the building blocks in your undergraduate uh, uh, curriculum. There is a combination circuit all these blocks um, like uh, you know encoder, multiplexer, uh, arithmetic circuit and so on. And then comes to flip flops. So, you have flip flops, registers, memory all these need to be thoroughly learned what is what are what is the architecture of this, what is the function of that, what is the input output characteristics and so on. This should be thorough so that um, we can build higher level uh, system using these blocks. And I talked briefly about the minimization. So, you would have learned most of the time this graphical tool called Karnoff maps. Um, the, the computer algorithm equivalent to that is a coin McCluskey which is very very complex because it starts with the min term. So, there are a faster methods like espresso which is heuristic which does not necessarily um, produce a minimal solution, but very near minimal solution. But the computation time is very very 
negligible or compared to the the coin mcluskey so this is what is uh, uh, used in in real life uh, synthesis tools use this minimization algorithm moreover uh, mostly you are used to kind of two level implementation but um, in again in real life circuits we will have multi level uh, multiple stages of um, combination circuits and there could be multiple outputs so when you minimize a multiple output uh, scenario you have to find the common sub expression among the outputs uh, to be able to share the resources so uh, that is one um, uh, step in multi level uh, multi output minimization so these are the kind of uh, steps which helps us in uh, multi level multi output minimization the like factoring substitution flattening but as i said this is not our focus um those who are interested can look at the 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 latest minimization algorithm in digital synthesis so let us move on and this is where we have uh, kind of stopped last time so i would like you to make a little uh, differentiation between the gates and the function okay so you take an and gate depending on the active levels of the signal it can do other function so take this truth table and assume that a b that the inputs and the output are active high so you look at it that means that when both the inputs are active output is active otherwise the output is not active so it means or if you want to the conventional terminology if both inputs are true then the output is true so the and gate when all the signals are active high implements an and function but look at this same truth table and assume that we are treating a b y as active low that means you look at the the truth table when any one of the input is active the output is active that means when we treat the inputs and outputs are active low the and gate implements an or function so that is what is shown here the same and gate but the function is or and the bubble indicates a active level so in essence and gate can implement and function or or function and for a, a clever student you can easily make out this is the exactly bringing the de morgan's theorem into our concept so you, here it is y is a and b so if you take the y bar so i use slash for the bar because it is easy to type in text five y bar is nothing but ab bar which is nothing but a bar or b bar so essentially what we are doing is is bringing this de morgan theorem into our conceptual level so that when you work out simple circuit it is very easy that you don't waste uh, gates so let us uh, take another example let us go uh, and look at the nand gate so and gate can do and and or function depending on the active level of the inputs and the outputs so let, let us take the nand gate and you look at this we will treat the inputs are active high and the output as active low then you see when both the inputs are active the output is active or when both inputs are true the output is true that means it is implementing an and function and look at the opposite like when we treat the inputs are active low a and b as active low and y is active then you look if any one of the input is active the output is active otherwise it is not active so this implements an or function so that is shown as uh, that or symbol with the the bubbles for the active low input so when you see this symbol it is essentially doing an or function of the active low a and b but essentially the gate involved is a nand gate okay that's a idea um nand gate has one more property so that let us move to the next slide so look at this when both the inputs are active low output is active high or when the both the inputs are um, false the output is true when both the out inputs are true the output is false it shows that if if we tie it together so you tie a and b together like this and you have a single input then if input is zero the output is one input is one output is zero so this nand gate can 
uh, act as an invert it can implement an invert function or uh, act as an inverter. So, NAND is called a universal gate it can implement AND function OR function and invert function. So, in conclusion if you take NAND gate and NOR gate uh, these are universal gates depending on the active levels of the signal it can implement AND OR or invert, but both AND gate and OR gate can implement both AND function and OR function. So, this is making a uh, difference between uh, the gates and the function and also um, we are essentially we are bringing in uh, the De Morgan's theorem uh, into the uh, into the uh, concept. So, let us move on. Um, so, uh, an example of this which you often do is that you have an AND OR implementation say two AND gates feeding an OR gate. So, let us put a bubble here that means invert it and to compensate for this inversion or uh, bubbling we will put another bubble at the input here. Similarly, uh, put a bubble here and bubble here so that it is equivalent these two circuits are equivalent. But the moment you put that you know that this is an AND gate which is doing an AND function and this is also an AND gate which is doing an uh, OR function ok. So, uh, so you essentially convert an AND OR into a NAND NAND um, by applying this concept you do not have to do a De Morgan's theorem very simple uh, conceptual way you can convert. Uh, this AND OR into a NAND NAND um, uh, kind of representation uh, that is why uh, the beauty of differentiating the, uh, the functions and gates. So, let us move. So, again, again an application is shown here suppose you have an uh, Boolean equation like A bar or B bar and C bar then if you take it in a very naive way without kind of trying to minimize it then you will put 3 inverters. A bar B bar C bar put an OR gate and then everything will be this output and the input is handed to get. So, you end up with uh, say 5 gates, but if you apply uh, this uh, the method we have discussed then uh, we put these these are commas bubbles. So, here is a bubble and we have one bubble here. So, to compensate like here for this inverter to make it symmetric we put a bubble here and bubble here. So, immediately you know that this is nothing but a AND gate and this is nothing but a NOR gate. So, you end up with 2 gates instead of 5 gates. So, uh, though we are not going to do any kind of gate level uh, uh, implementation, uh, but for small circuit very quickly you can work out. Sometime it is useful um, you have a little glue uh, logic very simple logic you can quickly uh, write a VHDL code by converting like this uh, not that the tool can handle it, but then uh, sometime in simple cases uh, you can work out at least the concept wise uh, what you have learned uh, it reinforces that is why I discussed this. Uh, let us look at uh, one or two other combinational components um, take an encoder you would have studied an encoder. Um, let us take the example of a binary encoder. So, here in the binary encoder in this encoder you have 8 distinct input at a time any one of the input can be active active high. So, we code uh, the output as a equivalent binary number that means if this is active this will be 0 0 0 if i 1 is active 0 0 1 i 7 is active 1 1 1 like that. So, it is an 8 input uh, to 3 output 3 binary output encoder and uh, you can imagine uh, that the internal circuit is nothing but OR gate. Suppose I 7 is uh, is 1 then there will be 3 OR gates and the I 7 will go to the input of all OR gates so that you get a 1 1. So, encoder essentially uses an OR gates and when you have priority suppose uh, there is a situation that uh, more than one of this can be active at any time then we have to kind of uh, give priority to one of them because we assume that only one will could be active at any time. In that case there will be AND gates um, of uh, you know coming here uh, the top so that when the I 0 is active it should mask the I 1 out. So, there will be uh, the invert of I 0 will be going to mask it. Um, uh, the I 1 and when it comes to I 2 invert of I 0 and I 1 will be going and masking 
uh, the I2 and so on. So uh, the last gate will have a huge AND gate with the which with uh, which mask with all the uh, uh, the uh, complement of all these inputs. You have studied priority encoder. So this is what is encoder about. And one property of the encoder is that the number of bits in output will be less than the number of bits in input. So this is what is encoder and basically uh, it is nothing but the OR gate uh, equal to the number of outputs. Um, in, in case of simple encoder let us look at the decoder. Um, I am showing an example of a binary decoder. So here we have 3 binary inputs that means it can go from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. So that means 0 to 7 and we have distinct 8 outputs. Suppose uh, the number uh, here is 1, 0, 1 then O5 will be active. So if the number is 5, fifth output will be active. Okay. So this basically uses AND gate that means uh, we will put an AND gate. Suppose the uh, number is 101 here, put an AND gate here. Uh, this one goes directly, one goes directly. This goes through an inverter or a bubble to the AND gate. So for 5 only this AND gate is active and that goes to O5. So you can imagine there will be 8 AND gates with 3 inputs each uh, with, with uh, uh, the decoding all the min terms. So that is a decoder. In a general decoder uh, the number of uh, bits in the input will be less than the number of bits in the output. So um, normally in digital design in high level design we will be using um, there will be need to use the decoders uh, may not be much of encoder but we will be definitely using more decoders than encoder but um, depending on the need there could be use of encoders also. So let us uh, 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 move on. Uh, this is one um, um, case, uh, the tri-state gate, uh, which is cause often quite a lot of confusion. So this shows a tri-state inverter. So where it is like a normal inverter when this enable is high. So if enable is high, then a is one, y is zero, a is zero, y is one. But when enable is zero. Uh, then we say y is tri-stated and most people do not know what is or we say high impedance and uh, it is indicated by the symbol z. So to understand what is high impedance and if I ask a student what is a high impedance many people um, are not very clear. So let us look at the implementation of this uh, tri-state inverter. So it is like a usual normal inverter like a PMOS on top and NMOS on at the bottom but in between you can see one more NMOS and one more PMOS is introduced. When enable is active this transistor and this transistor will be on so that when A is 1 this path is uh, active pulling uh, the Y to 0. When A is 0 uh, this path is active uh, pulling the Y to the VDD making it 1. Okay. So what happens if this enable is off in an inverter case either this path is active or this path is active. But when enable is active you can see that this is cut off and this is cut off. So this particular point this output uh, has a very high impedance path to the VDD or the ground. That means you can say if the resistances are equal maybe as a 10 meg uh, to here 10 meg to here and if the supply is a, a 5 volt then this will be floating at um, 2.5 volt any coupling any any small signal coupling can pull it uh, to the 1 or 0 uh, that is why this is called high impedance and um, this is used for multiplexing and busing and all that. Uh, let us see uh, the scenario here. So here I show uh, say multiple um, tri-state inverters are tied together to form a bus. The idea is that only at any time only one of the output drives this, this output. So all others will be cut off and um, if, you, if, uh, if both are two any more than any one of them is on then there will be a, a clash here that means it can be 1 uh, and if this is 0 then there is, a, there is a problem. So 1 is active like that and the 0 so there will be a short circuit from the VDD to the ground. So that should be avoided but uh, there is a problem 
if all are cut off then this input will be this output will be kind of um, in between and if this uh, bus is connected to some inputs then this will be floating and any any small noise can make it uh, switch go up and down and uh, there will be lot of power uh, wastage in this uh, maybe in the circuit design uh, this is taken care this is ignored when everything is cut off but still there will be lot of power dissipation due to switching. So when you tri state a bus normally either you pull it up or pull it down through a high resistance so that when everything is cut off it is safely uh, kind of uh, 1 or 0 a weak 1 or 0 is there. So either you pull it up to VDD through a high resistance or a pull it down uh, to the ground um, using a high resistance. So uh, that is about the tri state gate. Um, so please remember this uh, tri state gate as um, uh, 3 state at the output 1 is um, 0 uh, then the next one is 1 and the high impedance high impedance means the output is floating and if you are driving any input it should be pulled up or pulled down and it is a very bad um, strategy to keep any output at high impedance uh, to mean inactive state many a times students write VHDL code if enable is if some condition is not met uh, the output is tri stated it is a, it's, it's a, a dangerous thing to do uh, if you are not sure uh, what you are doing that means that output will be um, in between some state and that is driving some input and it can produce incorrect uh, logic levels at the, the output of those circuits uh, which it is driving. So you have to treat tri state gate, tri state gate should be used only when you are uh, multiplexing or you are busing um, otherwise it should not be used um, it is not an inactive state like 0 or something like that. So uh, just like that you should not put uh, Z uh, in, a, in, a, in coding when you are coding uh, uh, the digital circuit. So let us move on to the next uh, combination circuit uh, you would have learned. Uh, that is multiplexer. Um, so the multiplexer you know that um, multiplexes the input. So in, a, in this case I am showing a 4 to 1 multiplexer. So 4 to 1 multiplexer will have a 2 bit select line. When the select line is 0 A goes to Y when select line is 1 B then 2 is C and 3 is D. Uh, this can be uh, uh, like 1 bit or multiple bits it does not matter and you know that internally it is nothing but AND or gates and the select line will enable particular AND gate. So in the case of 4 to 1 marks I have written here for 1 bit case there are 4 AND gates corresponding to 4 inputs and each AND gate has this particular 1 bit input and the select line going to enable this is the min term decoding of the select line like here. Uh, the select 1 and select 0 will go with a bubble here select 1 and select 0 will go directly so that when it is 1 1 this path is selected and there is an OR gate here which combines the output of all the 4 AND gates. So in general if you have an 2 raised to n to 1 multiplexer then you have at the input 2 raised to n AND gates with uh, one each AND gate is of 1 plus n inputs that is a log. Um, logarithm of the number of inputs okay uh, to the base 2 1 plus n inputs and an OR gate um, of 2 raised to n input to combine all the 2 raised to n output of the AND gate. So that is a multiplexer uh, the, we let us move on to the demultiplexer it is opposite of demultiplexer. So you have one input depending on the select line it, it, it uh, puts it to any one of the 4 outputs. So if the select line is 0 it goes here if it is 2 it goes here and so on and basically it is an AND gate you know that there is an AND gate in this case there are 4 AND gates at the output and this A goes to all the AND gates as 1 bit in the 1 bit case and the select line goes to all the AND gates uh, with the proper decoding like here select 1 bar and select 0 bar here select 1 and select 0. So for a 1 to 4 D marks there will be 4 AND gates of 1 plus 2 input for 1 to 2 raised to n 1 D marks you have 2 raised to n AND gates we each AND gate has 1 plus n um, inputs. So that should be kept in mind. So a multiplexer is AND OR gates 
and the demultiplexer is nothing but uh, the AND gates. So, and this is one uh, picture that you see in a textbook normally the application of the multiplexer and demultiplexer is shown like that. There is a 4 to 1 uh, multiplexer with multiplexers with the select line and uh, at the other end it is demultiplexed with the same kind of select line ok. So, it is a textbook uh, conceptual picture and many a time some kind of a, 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 a rotary kind of arrangement is shown. But in real life in real system uh, this need not be very symmetric that means symmetric I mean that at one end it may be 4 to 1 multiplexer at the other end it may be 1 to 3 demultiplexer. Uh, second thing is that it need not be ordered like it is not that A goes to A it, it, it need not be like that maybe A and B will go to B here and C go to A and so on it need not be very much ordered. And the bus thing uh, you can uh, go and see some serious um, digital logic design you will not see any symbol of a demultiplexer ok. You will not see any explicit demultiplexer in the circuit ok. So, you can think over it um, please think over why that happens ok. Uh, it is not that the demultiplexing is not happening it is happening, but you will not see a combinational uh, uh, circuit which is acting as a demultiplexer. So, you can mull over it you can come out with the answer maybe you can communicate it to me or uh, find the answer yourself. So, that uh, is is about the multiplexer and demultiplexer. Uh, let us move on uh, let us uh, so that is a kind of a quick overview of some of the components of the, the combination circuit. So, I have told you about uh, the gates and the function. So, uh, as I said an AND gate can do AND or OR function. Uh, NAND gate can do uh, AND or or invert function similarly in OR gate. So, they are universal gate and essentially we are building uh, the de Morgan's theorem into our concept. And uh, second thing I have told you uh, uh, is about uh, the tri state gate. Um, what is the tri state high impedance and the care need to be taken while using the tri state gate or what are the application of tri state gate. And, um, and the next thing I talked about is the encoder and decoder. Uh, encoder what is the structure of encoder, what is the structure of decoder. Then we hand looked at the multiplexer and demultiplexer, uh, what is multiplexer and what is demultiplexer. And uh, the real life, real life circuit is not like textbook picture. You may not see a demultiplexer symbol and as I said you please uh, think over and come out with an answer why there is uh, may not be a combinational demultiplexer. Um, you know explicitly the symbol is not there in the real circuits. So, let us look at the uh, uh, the flip flops and latches. So, this is uh, important. So, this shows a latch a transparent latch it has an input D and the output Q and there is a clock and the operation of that uh, the latch is that when the clock is active when the clock is high. Um, so, I am sorry for this picture this is these are lines uh, this is the real waveform and these are the lines which shows the edges. So, do not confuse and these are the, the kind of um, uh, lines dotted lines to show the, the clock edges uh, to match it uh, these are the waveforms. So, you see when the clock is high the Q, Q of the latch follows the input ok. So, um, uh, when the clock is high you can see the Q is exactly same as the D, but when the clock goes low whatever was the input is latched and so it remains. So, you can see here uh, uh, in the in the QL uh, next next time when the clock comes uh, that uh, that clock goes active uh, it again uh, produces the D, but when the clock goes low here it remembers the last state till uh, the, the clock becomes active. So, it, it remains 1 though the input has gone low here it remembers whatever is during this period and then it samples and it allows in, uh, the out input to come to the output. And when again when the clock is active you can see that before the clock is active it is going high, but that does not come to the output when clock goes high then uh, you get the output and when clock goes low it is latched ok. So, that is the behavior of latch. When the clock is high it is transparent, clock goes low 
it remembers till the next uh, active clock comes. But in the case of flip flop uh, uh, this is edge triggered that means whenever a clock edge comes whatever is the input is transferred to the output with some timing constraints which we will see later. So, here you can see the, the behavior of it and this triangle represent the edge triggering action. So, this is a positive edge triggered flip flop. So, you can see that when the positive edge comes and this is the flip flop output the input is same. So, when the positive edge comes uh, the input is 0. So, the output is 0 and it remembers till the next clock edge. So, here also the input is 0 the output is 0 the next clock edge input is 0 the output is 0 and here you can see that input is going high but is not reflected. But when the clock edge active clock edge comes that is transferred to the output and it remembers okay till the next clock edge though it has gone low uh, it retains till the next active clock edge and the next active clock edge it captures the 0 and it becomes 0. So, in the case of uh, the flip flop uh, you get output in synchronous uh, with the with the clock edge you can see the one is is going high the output is going high at this clock edge and it remains there till the clock edge. Not so in the case of the latch because due when the clock is active whatever is the, uh, the input changes will be reflected in the in the output. So, there is a difference between uh, the latch and the flip flop and most cases we will be using the edge to get flip flop uh, in the design. There are special cases where the latch can be used in advanced cases um, uh, we may not uh, see the, those cases uh, in this course, but we will stick uh, uh, with the use of uh, flip flop in this course. So, let us uh, move on. So, that is uh, uh, the sequential uh, part we have seen an overview of the, the combination circuit. Now, we have seen uh, the sequential circuit what is the difference between latch and the flip flop and the flip flop is edge triggered it can be positive edge triggered or negative edge triggered and it is synchronous uh, with the with the clock edge and uh, so that is uh, uh, the one important uh, part of the digital design the function or the logic and we have seen some basic uh, uh, sequential circuit and the combination circuit you have learned and this is very useful. So, keep in mind there are other parts which I am not touching upon uh, I hope you um, revise and uh, understand that. And let us move on to the next uh, important uh, requirement. So, that is nothing but the timing ok. Once you have tackled the function once a circuit is working then the next important thing is the, the timing. And now we will look at the, the timing for the basic timing parameter for a combinator circuit and uh, a flip flop. From there we can build uh, the, the more complex uh, timing uh, details of the uh, digital circuit. So, let us turn to our uh, slide. So, for combination circuit essentially say like a take an AND gate essentially it is a propagation delay. That means, if one of the input changes how much time it takes for the input that change to propagate to the output ok. So, from A to Q how much it takes that is the TPD or propagation delay. Now, there is a difference TPD is divided into two uh, sections or two parts one is TPLH and TPHL ok. So, this is the propagation delay uh, TPLH is the propagation delay when the output switches from low to high and TPHL is when the output switches from high to low. So, this will be different because you see the circuit is not symmetric a CMOS circuit is made of PMOS and the NMOS, NMOS circuit and depending on the uh, input signal may be PMOS is on may be the NMOS is on. You can see here the NMOS is in series PMOS is in parallel and uh, so depending on how the output switches whether it is going from low to high or high to low some part of the, the circuit is switched and some NMOS is involved some PMOS is involved you know that the mobility of electrons and holes are different. Uh, maybe the sizes of these transistors depending on the design is different. So, that all makes a difference in the propagation delay. So, normally in a combination circuit you need to, to specify the propagation delay from each input to each output. So, most of the time manufacturers will specify in the symmetrical case 
uh, the worst case uh, uh, delay that means from if you have 10 inputs to 10 outputs that, that they will specify what is the worst case input to output delay uh, which is TPLH and TPHL. But in if there is a large variation it is it is worthwhile to specify uh, the slowest input and the fastest input so that we can uh, maybe um, take that into account and uh, come out with some uh, clever design uh, to take, a, uh, take advantage of it. So, let us move on to the flip flop. So, in the case of uh, edge to get flip flop there are some important uh, timing parameters. So, here um, it is not that when the clock comes whatever is at the input is immediately transferred to the output. When the clock comes first thing to notice is that for the input here when the clock comes the input is 1 for the output to become 1 uh, it takes some time that is called TCO or the propagation delay for input to appear at the output from active clock edge. Okay. So, uh, that is called TCO clock to output or sometime it is called TCQ which is clock to Q. That means not that the data is going from the clock to Q, but the enabling path is from the clock. So, that is why it is called clock to Q. The input goes to the Q, but for this to happen for the input to come to the output the input itself should meet some timing requirement with respect to the clock edge. Okay. So, that means if the input has to go to the output when the clock comes the input has to be there at the uh, at this uh, point some time before the clock edge. That means that time is called setup time. So, input should be set up some time before the clock edge. Not only that uh, after the clock edge it should remain there for some time then only properly the, the input will be transferred to the output. If this is not met uh, we cannot guarantee what is the state of the output it could become 1 or it could become 0 uh, in the worst case uh, it can even get stuck in between okay, which uh, probably you would not have studied um, again in this course um, I do not have time to deal with uh, um, I mean uh, the concept related to that, but I will at least tell you how to handle that such situation. We will study in synchronization how to handle it uh, this scenario, but essentially in flip flop there is a setup time that means the input has to come sometime before uh, uh, the clock it has to remain there sometime after the clock that is called hold time. You hold the input after the clock edge for some time and if that is met with a TC or TCQ delay the output appears at the uh, uh, I mean the input appears at the output um, with that delay and this is the basic uh, timing parameter of a flip flop. So, knowing this uh, that is basically the, uh, the combinational delay which is uh, TPD uh, propagation delay which is TPLH and TPHL and this uh, the TCQ in the case of flip flop and uh, setup and hold time we can build all other timings whichever is required for the sequential circuit from this basic timing. Um, the next level we can build on this uh, uh, understanding. So, if you have not learned this this part of the timing please um, learn it now. Uh, let us move on. So, I want to show an example uh, some kind of um, application of the, the timing. Let us look at take this um, circuit you have an AND gate with a 5 nanosecond delay uh, input one of the input is, uh, is coming directly to one of the inputs of the AND gate. The other input of the AND gate goes through 3 inverters each of 5 nanosecond delay. So, this point is called A, this is intermediate point is called B and the output is phi, Y. So, assume that uh, the a is changing at 50 nanosecond from 0 to 1 okay. before that we assume it is 1. So, if you do a, a static analysis of this circuit what happens is that typically you learn uh, in, in the undergraduate this is 0 that means this is 1 because of the odd number of inverters this is 1 and this is 0 1 and 0 is uh, 0. If this becomes 1 this input is 1 this is 0 again the output is 0. So, we are expecting uh, uh, you know a constant static 0 at the output, but you see because of this um, 15 nanosecond delay 
for b to change from uh, say 1 to 0 uh, something interesting can happen let us look at what is the b when go uh, when a goes from 0 to 1. So b will change from 1 to uh, I mean 1 to 0 like this after 15 nanoseconds. So at 65 nanosecond b goes from uh, 1 to 0 but you know that a is directly connected here. So a changes here from 0 to 1. So for 15 nanosecond time both a and b are 1 here and so that pulse will come at the output as a 1 uh, with a delay of 5 nanoseconds. So the output y look like this. So you get uh, a pulse of 15 nanosecond duration uh, which was not intended like we were not like after all 0 and 1 in an AND gate is, is um, 0 but we get something called a pulse and many times it is called a glitch and I do not know whether you have studied uh, this, this is called a static 0 hazard. So when whenever you have an AND gate uh, this static 0 hazard can happen. Uh, now you can imagine an opposite of that a static 1 hazard. So if you have for that you have to have an OR gate here and similar setup but instead of A going from 0 to 1 A has to go from 1 to 0 okay. So here an OR gate uh, input of the OR gate uh, has the same structure same circuit and the A moves from 1 to 0 then you are normally expecting a constant static 1 but you will get a 0 glitch or a 0 pulse. Um, so uh, this is called static 1 hazard and you must have studied some ways of eliminating uh, this static hazard and uh, things like that using uh, adding some redundant terms, uh, product terms and all so on. But the important thing is that why are we studying this because nobody will cook up a circuit like this. Everybody knows that 0, 1 is 0 or uh, in the case of an OR gate 0, 1 is 1. So there is no need of cooking up a circuit like this only thing is that the only use for this circuit is that if you want a pulse out of an edge then you can use this circuit and um, definitely we will be using uh, this kind of structure um, as we proceed for precisely for same application. You have an edge which is going like something is going from 0 to 1 for a long time but we want to convert into a pulse you can use it but other than that why are we studying this hazard? Um, is that it is just a model okay. In real life uh, this can happen in very uh, kind of um, uh, very nice way which you may not detect. So uh, let us move on to the real life case so you take an AND gate with uh, 3 inputs uh, which is coming from some circuit uh, through some IS in a, in a chip and assume that B is C is permanently 1 at some time instance B is going from 0 to 1 and A is going from 1 to 0. Now C is 1, B goes from 0 to 1, initially it was 0 and A goes from 1 to 0 and there is some delay here, some logic is there here and maybe it is a wire delay. So uh, the A does not go from 1 to 0 immediately, it stay there for some time, so you get a glitch here. So whenever there is an AND gate and the input does not arrive at the same time or there is an unbalanced path delay you will get the glitches at the output okay. Similarly whenever you have an OR gate with unbalanced path delay you will get glitches okay. So that is the first thing to, to understand uh, most of the time in your basic course you have taken everything as static that you apply some kind of um, set of inputs then you get some active high or low for a particular input. But it is not going to be like that the, the outputs are going to, to glitch and uh, will settle to some value. So this is quite normal you need not be worried about it. Um, in a moment I will tell how to handle that. So you will see a lot of glitches in combination circuit, lot of switching before getting the correct output it is not a problem at all. But the main thing is that one side effect of that is that if there are a lot of switching then there will be a lot of power dissipation because the power dissipation is proportional to the switching. So if there is unnecessary switching, uh, so if the it will be good from a power dissipation point of view if you can balance the delay then the power dissipation in this gate will be less. So uh, that is about the hazard and in this case we have seen that in just one and there is one glitch. 
So, but um, you can imagine a situation where input change is one once and there could be multiple glitches at the output and that can happen in a multi level circuit uh, say take the case of an AND gate with a static hazard case which gives a 0 1 0 glitch. But you see there is an OR gate following which gets this 1 to 0 transition before this 0 1 0. So, I am showing A here uh, this particular x, x is not marked I am sorry. So, uh, this is x, x is shown here. So, the y is shown here this glitch, but you know that this 1 to 0 uh, comes before that and both combine uh, you will get a 1 0 1 0 2 glitches at the output. Okay. So, it is supposed to transit from 1 to 0, but it goes to 0 then goes to 1 and then goes to 0. But it is quite normal in the case of um, uh, in the case of um, uh, combination circuit and you can imagine if there is this is followed with another uh, level of the circuit it might glitch 3 times uh, depending on the uh, on the logic. So, that should be kept in mind, but in normally in sequence circuit what we do is that we will have a flip flop here when everything settles we will give enough time for all these things to settle then we will latch the correct output to that flip flop. So, in a sequence circuit we are not worried about the glitches only thing is that um, when you simulate circuit you will see lot of glitches uh, you need not worry that this is quite normal. Uh, so, that is about the hazard. So, let us move on. So, that is the second um, uh, factor we have talked about after the uh, the function uh, functional aspect I have uh, you know talked about the timing and the delay parameter for uh, the combination circuit is propagation delay and there are two parts one is TPLH and TPHL that means the propagation delay when the output switches from high to low uh, or output switches from low to high because the circuit is not symmetric um, not all the all the transistors are switching at the same time and some are PMOS some are NMOS. So, this makes a difference uh, when a particular output switches from low to high and uh, depending on the number of inputs uh, from each input to each output the delays will be different, but the manufacturers often specify the worst case delays or if there is variation it can be a large variation the fastest and the slowest can be uh, specified. Uh, we have seen the, uh, the timing parameters of a flip flop, the setup time whole time the input has to set up some time before the clock edge, input has to be there uh, for some time after the clock edge. Uh, and if that happens uh, with a uh, propagation delay TCO uh, the output appears uh, the input appears at the output uh, properly if it does not happen then the output is not uh, we cannot say what will be the output it could be 0 it could be 1 it could get stuck in between. Then we have seen hazard static 1 hazard static 0 hazard um, it is useful because in real life because of the unbalanced path delay AND gate and OR gate can produce glitches which is normal and it can be dynamic hazard multiple glitches, but normally we put in sequential circuit a flip flop at the output when everything we give enough time when everything settles the settle value is latched on to the flip flop. So, uh, the, the next uh, uh, we will move on the next important con, uh, constituent is the electrical characteristics okay. and these are the voltages currents and the power dissipation and again in your basic course you have studied this voltage levels VOH, VOL, IOH and IOL. VOH is the output voltage when the output is high, VOL is the output voltage when the output is low, IOH is the output current which is flowing out when the output is high, IOL is the out output current which is flowing inside uh, when the, uh, the output is 0. Uh, so, uh, uh, that is the, the output voltages or output voltages and currents. Input voltage is VIH that is the voltage which uh, the circuit considered as a high voltage or a 1. Similarly, this is the VIL is a voltage which is considered as a 0. IAH is the input uh, current flowing in when the input is high and IAL is uh, uh, the input current which is uh, uh, flowing out when the uh, input is uh, low and uh, things like that. To understand we should look at the output uh, stage of any gate all the gates output stage will look like this 
there will be an a p mos transistor here and n mos transistor here any one of them will be on if the output is one this p mos is on uh, and n mos is off the output is zero uh, the n mos is on and the p mos is off okay so when the output is high this ioh current flows and charge the output capacitance output capacitance means all the all the capacitance if there are a lot of inputs connected everything lumped together as a lumped capacitance it is showing similarly iol is when the output is zero this capacitor discharge through this particular uh, transistor now you can see that if the voh is nothing but uh, the vdd minus the ioh into the own resistance of this transistor so it is voh is nothing but vdd minus ioh and r on so as the current increases this comes this comes down so if the current is increasing because of the dissipation across this transistor increases the voltage here goes down so but then you know that there is a danger that uh, it should not go below some voltage because then if an input is connected here it should recognize it as high voltage so there is a limit uh, below which it should not go so the manufacturers will make sure that at the maximum current specified they will say that it will not go below a particular minimum value so that the inputs can recognize it as high so opposite case is when the output is low the voil is nothing but the ioil into the r on resistance of this transistor so voil is ioil into r on now you know that the, if the ioil goes up the voil goes up so when the ioil is going up the voil will move up again it is important that that this should not exceed uh, the the limit maximum limit of the vil so the manufacturer says for the maximum current specified it doesn't exceed uh, some fixed value uh, not only that it is not that the v, there has to be some gap between the vil max and the vil max some gap between the voh min and the vih min so that some noise come that doesn't corrupt uh, uh, the logic operation so there has to be some margin between this uh, voh min and vih min that is called noise margin so let us look at this so this is noise margin when an output drives an input uh, the manufacturer specify at the maximum ioh what is the minimum output voltage and manufacturer make sure that the vih min min that means uh, uh, the minimum voltage which is recognized as high uh, or the the one is uh, below the voh min and that is called nmh or the noise margin this accommodates some noise uh, voltage so that uh, if a noise couples here it doesn't corrupt the uh, the logic uh, operation similarly the voil max has to be less than the voil max uh, and the difference is called the noise margin uh, the next thing we important to know is what is the fan out fan out is nothing but the number of inputs a particular output can drive so that is fan out so how do we find out because here we have ioh and iol so that means when the output is high this ioh is supplying uh, the ioh of many inputs okay so uh, similarly this iol is supplying the many iol so basically to find out the number of the input a particular output can support we have to find the ratio of ioh to iih and iol to iil and find the minimum value that will give us uh, uh, the the fan out so the fan out is nothing but uh, the minimum of ioh max by iih max um, and iol max and iil max so that is the the fan out in the case of uh, 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 digital circuit and uh, you know that when a output stage like take this case uh, the supply is vdd assume that this capacitor is c then when you know that when uh, uh, suppose this is switching on and off with a frequency of f you know the energy stored here is a half cv squared f but there are two path with switching on and off so half cv squared f plus half cv squared f then you will get uh, uh, the the kind of switching dissipation is not the leakage the switching dissipation is nothing but uh, the c which is the output capacitance vdd is a supply voltage 
and f is a frequency for an output uh, single output stage uh, power dissipation is proportional to the capacitance uh, all the capacitance lumped together uh, uh, the the uh, the power supply voltage and the frequency so one good thing is that the the power dissipation is you know quadratic actually related to the the power supply voltage so that's why many a times the supply reduction the feature size reduction happens when you reduce the feature size uh, you make transistors small this capacitance becomes small so the power dissipation reduces similarly uh, since the transistors become small the supply can be reduced and if supply is reduced from 5 volt to 2.5 volt there is a four times reduction in the power supply but this frequency many a times uh, uh, people are not interested in uh, reducing it it goes higher and higher um, the year after year so that is about the uh, the power dissipation equation so here uh, in the electrical characteristics um, uh, we have seen uh, basically the the voltages and current voh uh, vih uh, vol vil and ioh iil and we have seen that the voh comes down as the current goes up so there is a minimum for voh and voil goes up and the current goes up so there is a max for voil and there has to be a margin between voh min and vih min voil max and vil max that is called noise margin and um, the 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 fan out is uh, the ratio of the the currents the minimum value of it and the power dissipation is is uh, uh, cv squared f so the power dissipation is proportional to capacitance that is why the transistors are made small um, two purposes the power is um, reduced and also uh, the the area comes less so that within the same area more transistors can be put and uh, the power supply and the feature size is reduced the power supply can be reduced to for a quadratic re reduction in uh, the power dissipation and similarly power dissipation is proportional to frequency many times you are not able to reduce the frequency uh, because uh, uh, you know the computation uh, requirement are high but you can see that nowadays the devices your uh, mobile phones or the laptops or even the desktop when it is not operational uh, the, the frequency of the CPU is scaled down that means if it is idle uh, the frequency of the CPU core is reduced so that the power dissipation is uh, reduced. So these are the three main constituents of uh, at least the important constituents which cannot be ignored at all that is the function uh, the timing and electrical characteristics and if you look at any data sheet you take a you must have seen some symbol uh, gates like 74000 uh, I do not know whether it is used uh, now but if you look at it um, the first thing is a function in the data sheet. So you have the truth table of the gate uh, followed with all the timing parameters like uh, TPLH, TPHL followed with all the electrical characteristics and uh, you take the case of a processor all this will be specified uh, that function uh, the, ti the timing and the electrical characteristics only thing is that in the case of complex circuit uh, this will be uh, quite a lot of spec and uh, many a times nowadays separate data sheets are uh, uh, you know uh, issued for each of this uh, thing. So uh, that is uh, that's I can say a brief revision of the basic. Now what is left uh, in this overview um, part is that a quick um, review of the present state of the uh, digital VLSI or FPGA uh, so that you are in touch with the field before we get on with the, the serious design. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, lecture. Uh, please go back, uh, review, uh, refer to the reference book, uh, learn well and I wish you all the best. Thank you.